every now and then my shop gets totally out of control and so I just have to shut down operations here and get things cleaned up and get rid of junk. So I've been doing that the last two, three days here and uh, things are starting to come together but I've got a lot of work here left to do, probably another two days or so. I gave away a bunch of stuff and I've been slowly but surely cleaning all the various areas while I'm doing other kinds of work. But today I'm gonna focus on my pliers situation. I must have looked at 20 or 30 videos on YouTube about plier storage devices and uh, there's some pretty good ones that are for toolboxes and I'll probably go with those uh, but what I didn't like was the ones that people had for their bench or for the wall and so there are a couple of types that they would come up with one is where you just have a strip like this and then you put the pliers on them like that and that works okay for these kinds of pliers here where, you, where you've got a nice balance there and a nice place uh, for that to hang those are fine but it does not work at all for top heavy pliers like these here or you know especially things like vice grips you know which are <laughs> They're very, that's a big challenge to figure out how to hang your vice grips. So I wasn't happy with that design. There's another design that um, uses a little bar, a couple bars, and you put these in here like this. But again, you have the problem of top heavy, and it's just a lot of the same issues here. So I remembered a video that I saw that a gentleman put together where he, he made what I'll call a rocket launcher out of a bunch of PVC tubes like this. And I thought that was a clever design. And so I was playing with the PVC and I've got a one inch piece here. And uh, I think if I had something like this, that would work pretty much for all these pliers. They would all have a nice stable place to hang and they would be all nice and visible and accessible. Even the pesky vice grips I think will work in this. Now for the vice grips I might want to notch out the front here just a little bit but uh, I think it still would be okay just like that. So I'm gonna do one using PVC tubes. Here's the design. I'm gonna glue a bunch of PVC pipes side to side to side and then I'm going to mount them on a board that of course hangs vertically and so the front will look like this. I'll have two rows to this. There will be a back row. The back row I'll use one inch tube which I think the one inch piping will handle anything you can throw at it pretty much and I thought that the one inch was probably more than you needed for these small ones so for the front row I'm going with smaller three quarter inch pipes so I'm going to glue these things side by side by side and I'm just going to screw them into a little wooden rack here that I'm going to make and so this is what the side view looks like here and in fact I'm going to use this as a template for the uh, end caps here so you'll have one row in the back that'll be for the larger pliers and one for the smaller ones in the front that's that's a few inches forward and a couple of inches down uh, here I am gluing the tubes together uh, edge to edge applying the purple primer here and then a liberal amount of cement uh, between each tubes now I'm gonna put these into four groups and that's just so that they're easier to handle. I didn't want to glue them all together in one big segment. Uh, so just uh, pushing these together and uh, they'll sit for half hour, 45 minutes while I do carpentry. These have been drying for a little while. I don't know that they're totally cured, but uh, they're just a tad flexible uh, when you bend them from side to side. So I thought I would just work a little more glue into the joint here uh, using this acid brush. I'm just laying out uh, the end cap on this piece of plywood and uh, all the wood that I use is is reclaimed here so uh, I'm blessed having cabinet makers in my park here where I have my shop so I get this stuff out of the dumpster these little cutoffs so this is a real nice piece of plywood I'll use for the end caps and then this is from a bed that I or maybe a futon that I got off the side of the road. These will be the backer boards uh, for the rocket launchers. So I'm not going to bore you with the carpentry on this. Cut my first one out on the bandsaw end cap and I'm just tracing it out on this other piece. So there we have it. That's where the two stringers uh, are going to end up. So I'll have two screws coming in the sides here. So I'll go ahead and drill that out and be back in a second. 
I finished the rack. Uh, here's the carpentry as it stands with all the mistakes I made. Uh, just a couple points to bring out on this. Uh, first of all, the uh, original design had me using both of these uh, oak pieces here as stringers. This was going to be in the back and uh, this was going to be in the front. And when I put this and actually laid it out and looked at it, I felt like it was a little bit flimsy. So I went ahead and put in a piece of three-quarter plywood. It's the same wood that the uh, the uh, end caps are made out of so it's cabinet grade plywood it's I think it'll provide nice support so these are going to be uh, drilled and screwed to the backer here and I think by having this longer it's going to provide a lot better support to these tubes so can you visualize where we're headed with this thing you got these on the back row and these on the front row I'm getting excited so for my front row, I don't want these rocket tubes to uh, touch the, the actual deck here. So I'm going to shim them uh, to mark a spot. And so this spot right here, if I drill through here, should put it a, drilling in about a half inch into the stringer. And that should give me pretty good uh, structural support there. And for the back, uh, I'm just going to make these flush here. And I've made a red mark about an inch from the top of the tube there. And that's where I'll drill my holes on the top. I'm going to put a screw in every other tube and so to do that I'm going to use a countersink bit on the drill press and I'll just go all the way through, uh, make a hole in the front and then I'll countersink, make a big hole in the front so the screw head can go through and then I'll take it all the way through the back. So that'll be perfect for the little wood screws that I'll use to attach this to the Well, I finally figured out that if I just feed the screw in with uh, one of my pliers, I can get the screw into the hole. So that solved that problem. Don't want to over tighten these. Just snug. Hey, that's pretty good. Not bad. Oops, that's kind of an intermediate size. We'll put that up at the top. Let's go with the big one here. Nice. Another big one. Nice. I'm liking it. And look at that. I've got 11 tubes on the top and 13 tubes on the bottom. So I've got room for growth here. Although, I think I've got all the pliers I'll ever need. Anyway, Hey, that turned out pretty good. It's just a little ugly. I gotta maybe think about painting this thing possibly, but I gotta figure out what kind of paint you can put on PVC. After exhaustive research on the different coatings I might consider for this PVC piping, it dawned on me that there is one substance that once it gets on there, never goes anywhere. And it stays forever and ever, even a hundred years from now. This job is done. Pretty happy with this. Uh, it holds all the pliers I commonly use and I have a few extra holes in case I buy others in the future. It's a nice and sturdy rack here. Uh, total cost on this, uh, let's see, I have uh, the, the PVC, you can buy 10 foot lengths of the three quarter and one inch sizes. They're about $3 for 10 feet. And then uh, for this job, I did have to buy a cement kit. My, I had a kit but my primer had knocked over and was dried out so I, if I'd have had this on hand I wouldn't have had to spend the money. So that was eight bucks for that set. So I've got uh, 14 bucks plus tax. Call it fifteen dollars uh, in this project. Everything else is recycled here and uh, so errors and all. Look at all those uh, error holes. <laughs> uh, came out uh, very satisfactory to me and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into its home. And I'll enjoy having this in the shop going forward. Thanks for watching. How on earth did my tubes end up too low? I cannot believe that. And I didn't even notice it while I was doing this. Well, I'm going to have to go back and uh, redrill the hole.
I think in baseball they would call that an unforced error. That was just a mental error on my part. I just put the holes in the wrong place, but luckily it's not unrecoverable. I just have to make some new holes and screw them back. I didn't even get upset. I made all kinds of mistakes on this project. Unbelievable. But hey, when you're doing something for the first time, it's bound to happen.